Welcome to Life, bringing you insight and experiences into love, relationships, and fertility with a focus on enjoying life and moving forward. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Julie, the author of the Happy Together books. Welcome to Life, Love, Insight, Fertility, Experiences. Today, I'm here with Julie, who's the author of the Happy Together books. She has done the most phenomenal job writing a series of books about parents who had children through third-party reproduction. So Julie, welcome, and thank you so much for taking the time and being here today. Thank you so much for inviting me, Lori. I'm looking forward to chatting today. Oh, me too. You know, I reached out to you to ask you if you wanted to do the podcast because I was writing a book and um, when you had started the Happy Together books and I was fortunate enough to get a copy of one, you were so lovely and so kind and gracious in imparting some wisdom in how to publish a book. And I thought, oh my goodness, what better author than you to invite on and ask if we could chat a little bit about why you wrote the book and how it's been received and what you hope people have gained from it and you've seen people gain from it. So I'm not sure where to start. I'll leave that up to you. Sure. So thank you so much again. Um, I guess what I can start with is just sharing what inspired me to write Happy Together in the first place, which was my own journey to motherhood uh, through egg donation. So just a kind of a quick recap here. I was uh, diagnosed with severe diminished ovarian reserve in my mid-30s. And my husband and I went on an infertility journey with my own eggs uh, through an IUI and a couple of IVF cycles. And neither of those cycles worked. We were only able to retrieve one egg per two IVF cycles. And one of those transfers did result in a miscarriage. And through that journey, my husband and I had always kind of had egg donation in, in the back of our mind as a possible path to parenthood. And what egg donation did for the two of us once we made that decision was restored our hope that one day we would finally become parents. And fortunately for us, that's what led us to our beautiful daughter. And when I was going through my infertility journey, I was seeing on a regular basis a reproductive uh, therapist who specialized in infertility. And during one of those conversations, when I was talking with her about the choice that we made to pursue egg donation, she asked me if we planned on telling our child about our family building story. And without a hesitation, my answer was yes, absolutely. It was something that we'd always planned on sharing. And she reached behind her on her massive bookshelf and pulled out a children's book and said, this is how you can get started. And of course, at that time, it was the thought of even having a child, let alone having a conversation with a child about their their um, family building story was so overwhelmingly emotional. I wasn't ready to really think about it quite at that point, but I did order the book and I stowed it away in a safe place in case I would ever be lucky enough to read it to a child. And fortunately I was. And when my daughter was born and she was a newborn, I started reading her this book that I'd purchased. That must have been hard to it do. It was, it honestly was. It was very hard for me to read for many of the times that I, I first started reading it. I was not confident in saying these words out loud quite yet. And what I've now come to realize is I was still grieving from my mostly my infertility journey, but partially the genetic loss. But I think everything with the infertility journey itself was still very raw and emotional at that point. So holding this beautiful newborn in my arms and reading her this story was just, it was very difficult and I did not feel confident doing it. Um, it was very hard for me to even say the word donor at first. I, I just didn't feel comfortable yet in my confidence in telling the story. It's, but, remarkable. Oh, it's mm -hmm. remarkable how you, you turned out to write books and help so many with it. But that initial feeling I, I see all the time. People are so thrilled to have this little baby and they've gone on such a painful journey for many, not everybody, but for many. And then they have to tell the story and they worry about telling the story 
because it triggers so many emotions. They worry about the story, not just for explaining the journey, but also for the future. Right. Absolutely. It does. And through that, I started imagining a book. I'd always wanted to write a book. I've always had an interest in writing and it's, Mm -hmm. it's been a passion of mine throughout the years. And so I had this idea for a book and I finally decided to write it. And a happy together and egg donation story was published in June of 2018. And that was originally um, published to help my own family and to have a book that I could read to my daughter, which really portrayed a strong sense of family and a strong sense of love and the happiness that a family can have together. And so I published that book and it really has brought my family together in a way that is now part of our family building story is also this book which has now touched thousands of other families. And it wasn't my original intent to necessarily write additional books, but when I saw the positive response that other parents had to the egg donation story, I had parents reaching out to me and saying, would you ever consider writing a sperm donation story or a single mother by choice story? So the evolution of the collection kind of expanded, expanded from there. You know, that's so true in life, isn't it? When I was having the book, I haven't had my book published yet, but the few people who have read it have already reached out and said, oh, would you do one on this? Or, oh, would you do one on that? And I'm like, oh my goodness, I haven't even finished this one yet. It's remarkable that you were able to touch so many people. So congratulations on that. And all just through trying to help and to tell your story. I think it's remarkable. And the story you wrote, I think is beautiful. I I love it because it's simple, but it's complex. And through that, it's pretty profound, if that makes sense to you. Right. Yeah. It's not easy to determine. I mean, the amount of time I spent deciding whether I would use the word sperm or seed or, you know, whatever. I really was very deliberate and thoughtful about every single aspect of the story Mm -hmm. because I wanted to keep in mind that the audience is really intended to be the child and that this book was really meant to be a resource that the parent could use to just use as a starting point to help introduce the family building story to a very young child. And through beginning to read a book like this or one of the other books that are out there, it gives the parents the confidence and then taking that story and starting to make it their own through the years as their child grows up. So I was very mindful about you know, the words that I use and wanting to explain a complex topic in as simple of a way as possible. Yeah, well, you certainly accomplished that. And what you just touched on, I think, is so important. You're trying to give the parents the tools to be able to start to tell their story. And just like you explained, when you started to tell the story or read the book, you weren't even sure how you would do that. I think that's what everybody faces or almost everybody in many ways. And one of the things I do in my practice I had shared with you is while people are are pregnant with donor egg babies or even using surrogates, I ask them to write a story to the child while the child is in the belly. Um, and I do that because it, it it's a way of beginning to tell your story and get comfortable with it. And most people can't do that right away. Most people really struggle with it. These tools, these books are huge assets for people. And so you've gotten all of this response from people where they're thrilled to have it and um, they want you to write other editions. So what do you do with all that, Julie? How do you move forward with it? How do you decide which books you can write, which you can't? And how does it feel to touch so many people having wanted to write a book for so long? Yeah, it's honestly very humbling. And I I never... (laughs) I never would have imagined this would be something that I would be able to put out into the world and that it would have such a great response. But honestly, you know, ever since I was diagnosed with infertility, I've been so passionate about this community, whether it's through volunteering with Resolve or attending Advocacy Day or um, helping with support groups or different things like that. This is my passion in life. And 
I do have a, a full-time career that I do kind of during the day, but this is honestly my passion. And there is nothing that is more fulfilling to me as a woman and as a mother and as an infertility advocate is seeing a child somewhere in the world looking at happy together with their parent or receiving a note from a parent thanking me for writing this book and letting me know that it's something that has really made an impact on their family. So it's just so fulfilling to know that I was able to do something that can not only help my own family, but help many other families, because I know firsthand how hard this journey is. And even though it was several years ago at this point that I had a newborn, I, I just, I, you'll, you never forget what that feels like and any way that I can be there for parents um, or intended parents through their journey, I'm, I'm happy to be able to do it. And I guess when it comes to what books I select to write, I, I would love to be able to write a book for everyone's story, but that's just likely not something that I'm going to be able to do. So what I try to do when deciding what book to write is really understanding is there a known large audience for this type of story? Because it is important to me to be specific with the types of books that I write and not overly generalize them because I feel the more specific the book is, the more it can really help each parent connect with their child through that specific family building story. So I do have a couple of other ideas for more books, but um, it's, it's just probably not going to be possible to fulfill every single request that I, that I do receive as, as an independent author. I think it's incredible that this all started just through the desire and the understanding of what it takes to have a child, not necessarily biologically tied to you and the feelings and the emotions. It's wonderful what you've been doing. As you yeah. get all of these um, notes from people and the thank yous and they're, they're reaching out to you, I know it must bring such joy, but what balance you must need also to write. How many books are there now in this series? Right now there's seven. Wow. So right now there's seven books. You have a full-time job. You have a daughter. That's a lot to balance. So obviously it is a passion. And you spoke about advocacy that you do. I just wanted to touch on that for a second because through yeah, infertility, sure. advocacy is so important. And there's so many ways to advocate, right? We can advocate on a state level. We can advocate on um, a federal level. And we can advocate individually for ourselves through this process. That is something I think that can't be said enough. And so I just wanted to take the opportunity to repeat that. And these books that you've written, I think, help people to feel empowered to be able to advocate for themselves and for their family and to have a comfort level that I'm not alone in this. And there are so many other people who have gone through the same journey, even if I don't know them and I haven't seen them. And your books are able to touch them. Right. It's really actually, it's amazing how much more awareness and openness there is now about donor conception versus even just when my husband and I were going through it a few short years ago. And I think part of that might have to do with social media as well. Yes. Um, yes. But, you know, certainly as it relates to the advocacy that you were referring to with the, the lawmakers and things like that, it's at this point, I can't imagine me that not being a continued passion of mine, possibly for many years to come, if not life. Um, infertility is a disease, and that's something I say a lot, but it's true. It's, it's a disease recognized by the World Health Organization, and it's just so isolating and makes people feel so alone, and it can make people feel broken, and it can, it can make you question your own identity. And so the more that I can do, whether it's writing the books or advocating in Washington, D.C. with lawmakers, whatever it is, it's just it's a passion of mine. And and really, I do it for any infertility couple uh, battling infertility that comes after me, any of the children. I mean, the more awareness that I can as a mother help raise about donor conception, whether it's embryo sperm donor, egg donor, whatever, the more awareness that I can as one person help raise, the more my child and other children born through uh, third party reproduction will know that they're not alone. And that's really one of the other reasons why I 
I do speak out about this because I don't want my child to grow up feeling like she's alone because she's certainly not. Um, and, you know, anything that I can do to help raise awareness is, is something that I'll, I'll try to do the best I can. Absolutely agree because the children are going to grow up and they're going to want to know that they were born through love and their family is their family. And sometimes the conception is anonymous and closed and sometimes it's open and that changes the dynamics as well. But I have found that the way the parent tells the story and feels comfortable with the story impacts the way the child receives the story. And, and so your book is beautiful and I, I haven't read all of them, but I've read some of them and they're all beautiful. And I think that's exactly what you did. I think you accomplished what it was that you set out to do and even more through this passion. So I really admire you and commend you because I think it's remarkable. A lot of people want to do things, but they just don't have the time or they find reasons that they're not able to do it. And you did it. So congratulations and thank you. Thank you for everything that you've done for the community. Thank you so much. Julie, if somebody wanted to get a hold of you, how would they do that? What would be the best way to reach out to you? Yeah, on social media, my Instagram is at Happy Together Children's Books. And then also my email address is info at Happy Together Children's Books.com um, and also through my website. But I do have a uh, a lot of women and, and men that I've connected with through Instagram, which has actually been therapeutic for me as well as a, as a patient and as a mother. Um, so I try to write some different posts and, and do different things to share some of the other stories that, that I'm aware of out there in the community and also maybe acknowledge some of the other aspects of donor conception for people. So welcome to follow me along on there and, and reach out to me anytime. Your Instagram page gives a wealth of information and you do share a lot about what other people are experiencing and going through as well as your own thoughts. So thank you so much. If anybody has any questions or any comments or I could help anybody, please feel free to contact me at lauriemetz.net. Thank you.